He's one of the best natural runners I've ever seen. Well, we're very proud of him. And he's clearly the top high school athlete here in the state. So, what's all this leading to, Art? I don't know quite how to say this. Say what, Mr. Hammond? I can't help but feel that the two of you are holding Davy back. Steph and I have always encouraged Davy's athletic interests. Yes, I know. Last year, I invited Davy out to join the track club. And again, he turned down my offer. The other coaches and I couldn't help but think that it was a decision other than his own. I think that Davy should have a chance to see what he could do against other athletes his own age from around the country. Our track team will be leaving in a few weeks for the national finals, and we'll practice each Sunday morning until then. I want Davy with us. Hasn't he said anything about this to you yet? What do you think, Steph? Oh, now to the right. To the, to right. the right. Yes, to the right. Look. See, just a little bit more to the left. So now, how's that? Better. Hi, mom. Dad. The coach came by while you're in the shower, bud. I've been meaning to talk to you about it. The finals. You have a captive audience. Yeah, but it's a lot tougher than I thought it would be. When coach asked me to join the track club, it was easy for me to say no. Their practices and competitions were on Sunday. And I have church and assignments on Sunday. But for finals, I thought I could talk the coach into letting me work out on Saturday. But then I found out that the finals for my event were held on Sunday. So I pretty much decided that was it. I couldn't go. Then coach comes to me and says, why can't you make an exception? This may be a once in a lifetime chance. So I thought, well, maybe I could. I said I had never run on a Sunday. I don't know. After talking to Coach Hadlow, maybe I am passing up something if I don't go to the Nationals. I don't know. Honey, this is a difficult decision. But you've made difficult decisions before. You'll get it sorted out, son. You need to know your mother and I are here for you if you need help. Thanks. So what are you doing for mutual tonight? I think we have a combined activity with the young women. It's a uh, service project. Um, Mrs. Glines, I think her name is. Yeah. The advisor was telling me that the new boy, the one that moved into, uh, the Pritchard place, that he hasn't been coming to church. Yeah, he hasn't come for a while. Doesn't really fit in. Well, he also said that uh, the priests in the quorum haven't really taken him to be one of their friends. Well, he's a little different. Have you tried to make him one of your friends? Hey, no one assigned me to be his friend. I was surprised when Angie Clausen gave me a sweater for my birthday. I love the sweater. But it seemed too nice a gift. Now it was Angie's birthday, and I didn't know what to give her. about it, the more I knew I wanted to give her something of value.
I began thinking of the things that have the most value to me. I had a crazy idea. I put it out of my mind. Then I thought, why not? Dear Angie, you're probably wondering why I'm giving you a book like this on your birthday. I wanted to give you something that is very precious to me. I guess I wouldn't be a true friend if I didn't share with you the most important thing in my life. I guess that in itself makes this the best gift I could ever give. But this book has also helped me through some of my hardest times and brought me lots of joy. Even more important, I know it's true. Something happened to me a few years ago. It really changed the direction of my life. My family had just moved. I was in a new school. It was hard for me. I chose friends that probably weren't the best. Cookies sound good. No way you're getting your arm up in there. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I tried not to be home as much as possible. Then summer came and I went to camp. None of my school friends were there. One afternoon we had a rock climbing activity. Some of us were getting pretty competitive and none of us wanted to get stuck. Don't worry, I'll wait for you at the top. I got into a situation where I couldn't go up or down. I started to cuss and swear. Dan was climbing next to me. He was a year older than I was. When I finished swearing, Dan said, Why do you say that stuff? It doesn't change anything. You're still stuck. It doesn't help to say that stuff. It never does. Instead of being offended by what he said, he made me think about that and everything else. I decided it was pretty dumb to be doing the things that I was doing, so I decided to change. Today I'm thankful to Dan. The fact that he was willing to say something to me that day made a big difference in my life. Yes, I remember Vernon Boswell all too well.
There's probably a Vernon in every childhood memory. It was nothing that Vernon did to deserve the cruel treatment he received. You just didn't let Vernon sit next to you. It was like there was a price to be paid if you did. Excuse me, can I sit down? Um, I'm saving it for a friend. Every day I would wonder, will anyone ever let Vernon sit by them? Mind if I sit here? Well, neither would I.